I'm delighted to be joined by Andrew and Pete. Hello. You're coming to JFB Talks Digital from the United Kingdom. I saw them at the weekend at the Youpreneur Summit. They are very funny and also good crack in real life, not just <laughs> on screen. You're very welcome to JFB Talks Digital, guys. Oh, thank you, thank you so for much us. for having us. I'm glad you said that because I think most people just see us in edited YouTube format. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad we come across well in real life too. Yeah. <laughs> We're not jump cutting our way through life. We, no. do, we do actually breathe. <laughs> we do take pauses. Sometimes. So you guys have, in my own humble view, have shot to digital marketing fame over the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. You're creative content creators, you're authors and YouTubers. And every time I open a newsfeed or a Snapchat, you're there looking at me. <laughs> Tell me, first of all, where you came from. Well, that's a, that's a bit of a question. Where did that, you come that from? That's a good question. Never been asked that one before. Where did we come from? Where did we go? Where we did we come to, from? <laughs> do, we, do we have to have that story, Joanne? <laughs> we drove that talk. <laughs> uh, where did I mean, we come from, from? Men came from Mars. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know where we've come from. We've been doing this for maybe about five-ish years now but it does seem like for the past one to two years we've really kind of nailed down yeah. our focus i feel like we were playing at the first few years of business to be honest yeah we we're just kind of finding our feet this is this is kind of what we preach though because um what a lot of people are doing is creating content that the trudging along in business and they're not really getting any results they're not getting any traction or awareness mm -hmm. um and this is what we like to teach people uh, to get quick, quicker results. Mm -hmm. So what happened to us was we were blogging for about maybe two, two, three years. Mm -hmm. We were on Twitter, we were on Facebook, and we literally just didn't get anything from it like, at all. Um, it, was just, it was just like hard work to do. And we, you can never really see any benefits. It's just two or three years of just blogging. And it's like, is this doing anything for us? <laughs> But you know, you get you get told that it's a long term strategy, and you just keep going with it, right? That's what we do. But one day we got really bored with this. Okay, so we started to go. <laughs> when we went to networking events, we would always do something a bit crazy, a bit funny, a bit out the out the box, and that's where we got all our business from. Mm -hmm. Just networking events, face to face meetings. Like in our local area, we were pretty well known yeah. for just being a little bit crazy in real life at these events. <laughs> yes. But online, no one had a clue who we were. <laughs> yeah. So we decided that rather than take chocolates and fireworks and party poppers, indoor fireworks, uh, <laughs> to networking events, rather than dress up as zombies for networking events, we got business from that event, by the way. Um, <laughs> what we decided to do was actually be more creative with our content, be more stand out with our content. So we, we let it ooze more of our personality out. Mm -hmm. We did things a little bit differently. We took the mick out of a few things. We went to extreme lengths to get some kind of content. And all these things like instantly had a result for us. The moment we start to put in a little bit more creativity into our content, that's when things actually started to um, really, really shoot for us. Like, mm -hmm. we can go for it. Um, and that's kind of, where we've come from, I guess. Mm -hmm. So maybe the last year or two, that's we've had this kind of focus on being a little bit different with our content. And that's where we've got all this, uh, you know, awareness, authority or guess. awareness from. And, it, and I think people are really resonating with that because they're doing a lot of plugging and they're really struggling to get any results or any kind of a reaction. And if you're not hearing anything back, then it's a but A, disheartening, and B, it's probably not going to work for you mm -hmm. in the long run. Like, it, it is a long-term strategy, and it'll get better and better as you go on. Yeah, we, we're kind but of bored of the whole like... long-term strategy angle, because we completely get that it is, and it can take time to grow an audience, and it can take time to grow authority. But in our opinion, like, if what you're doing now isn't getting any reaction, like, whatsoever, which a lot of people's isn't, yeah. then I don't know enough. why you think, as in a year's time, it's suddenly all going to work. Because in a year's <laughs> time, it's just going to be even noisier, right? <laughs> so somebody said to me this week that content marketing was, was simply a buzz. It's overrated. And in terms of a marketing tactic, um, it holds no weight at all. Um, having 
us just come back from a content marketing summit over two days in London and about scaling the brand of us or the, the brand of you. And um, content marketing was at, at the heart of it. Uh, what are your own views on that statement? That's crazy. It yeah. sounds like someone's really annoyed that they're not getting results mm. from content marketing. <laughs> uh, and they need like your help or our help. That, yeah. um, <laughs> It's interesting, right? Because at that event, they had up a slide at one point and the slide said, content mark, oh, what was it? I can't remember exactly what it said, but it said something like content marketing is the only viable option these days. And we kind of agree, I would say, especially if you're looking for longevity with your marketing. And yeah. I think it can be thrown around a lot as a buzzword, content marketing. But if you're looking to grow your business online, our view is the internet is made up from content, right? If you're looking to get found online, whatever you're going to be doing to get found online, you're gonna to have to create some kind of content. So if you don't have a marketing strategy around that content you're creating, then nothing's gonna happen, right? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know how anyone can say content marketing isn't a thing or content marketing isn't here to stay. If you believe the internet is here to stay, then you should really be thinking that content marketing's here to stay too. I think Unless we're going to revert only, 15 years. I know. I think, <laughs> I think the only difference is the fact that it's becoming so crowded that it's just, it's, it's not working for a lot of people mm -hmm. who are doing average, average things. Yeah. The average things are going to get filtered out. It's only the really good stuff that's getting seen. Um, and it's also, it's a constantly evolving. So there's a lot of new like trends coming about and there's, mm. you know, influencer marketing and advocacy marketing and, and things like this that are, are becoming more apparent as well. So content marketing, writing a blog for yourself might not be working, you know, as well as it used to. There's still room for it. But, you know, there's other forms of content marketing too that are yeah. um, really like set in a light right now. It's very much an umbrella term, isn't it? it is. Content marketing. It's not like, I mean, if, maybe it's thinking if writing a blog is content marketing, then yeah, maybe um, having a blog on your website isn't going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. now, I want to talk about um, the duo that is Andrew and Pete. And <laughs> remind me of like, you know, a boy band. Um, <laughs> but in digital marketing and it's very fitting that you know, we met in real life at the Upreneur Summer because that was about scaling the brand of you and I remember being on the Irish Apprentice a number of years ago and um, I got fired well I came third but I got fired because Bill Cullen who is the Irish Alan Sugar or who was then said you're great Joanne like I think you're great and if it was a job, I'd definitely hire you, but it's not, it's an investment in your business and you are your business and you're not scalable. And I'm like, well, actually, guess what? what? Now I am. But personality and individuality is something that rocks the internet. And you guys are a case in point, but what happens if this love affair ends and there's a break? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Take That broke up, <laughs> don't worry we've got the, a prenup world, in place the, the world's gonna end <laughs> if we if we break up yeah. it's just not gonna happen i feel like so. we just do a massive if we ever did i'm not saying we're going to don't worry don't get mad at me but if we ever did i feel like why we, have you been thinking about this i'm thinking about it now i'm, I'm being put on the spot I feel like a marketing strategy or tactic needs to be put into place mm. where we just split our audience and people just have to choose a side. Oh, wow. I feel like yeah. that will get people talking. Mm. And then we'll do like the classic reunion yeah. and the classic like black and white interview styles mm. um, it can be, to, um... to chart our rise to fame, mm. our fall from grace, and then our eventual coming back together. Well, funny about splitting, splitting the audiences, you've also put it up to Daniel and Lloyd Knowlton um, to get audiences to choose who's their favorite. So what's the idea behind this crazy marketing strategy? 63% uh, have chosen us over them, so. Yeah. That other 38% though, that does sting a little bit, um, to be mm, honest. Yeah, it was our I, audience that picked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people just did it out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about um, yeah, what, what, Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to be doing a kind of series of challenges with them. So they've sent us a challenge that we have to perform. And we're going to send them one and vice versa. 
and it's going to be a series of videos that is, it's going to attempt to, to give some value but in in more of a humorous way so it's mm -hmm. going to be quite funny so think of like tasks that you might see on say um celebrity juice or something <laughs> like that uh, yeah like it says it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Twist. Yeah. Have you so met the, Have you met Dan and Lloyd? Have I what? Have you met Dan and Lloyd before? Not in real life, just not real. online. Just not online. Our relationship yeah. isn't as deep as yours. Okay, let's just. No, it's, it's not. It's really funny because the, we call them our frenemies, so they're great guys, but total enemies, right? Um, <laughs> now we we have like different services, so it's all good. Yeah. Um, but it's it's funny because they're almost a little bit like us, like me me being Dan and you being Lloyd. Like mm. Lloyd's the really funny one. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, Dan's the one that spends <laughs> forever on his hair. Uh huh. <laughs> but they're brothers, so yeah. I feel like they've got that advantage. But we're brothers too. Oh. oh. <laughs> so this is a new form of marketing because. When we're trying to inform, educate, or inspire people to um, elevate their digital marketing tactics, you know, that can be quite boring. And we feel that maybe we have to be kind of sensible and professional all the time. Yeah. Um, but what you're doing is you're almost stepping into the entertainment realm, mm -hmm. you know, almost like Anton Deck meets Mary Smith and Michael Stelzner, although I should have used two men, <laughs> John Lee Dumas and Michael Stelzner, you know. It's yeah you, yeah, you can be Mary Smith. <laughs> I feel like I would be Mary Smith any day of the week. <laughs> really I think can you tell content on marketing? Uh, because a lot of people are trying to learn and trying to educate themselves and it's hard work. And if that content that they're reading or consuming to mm -hmm. educate themselves is also ridiculously dull and boring, and it's just making it harder for yourself. Mm -hmm. So if we can tell you exactly the same stuff or better stuff in a funner, more lighthearted way that's actually going to keep you engaged and watching, then you know we're going to win out over them. Yeah. Oh, it's not something for everyone. I think a lot of people have that misconception that we're just all about teaching businesses to have a laugh or teaching businesses to be fun or funny. And we're not. Mm. But we're saying if you've, if you've got that asset then use it, right? Because it is completely underused, especially in our world of marketing. There isn't that many um, marketers that can entertain and educate at the same time. Yeah. And we're all about create, making our content as consumable as possible. So even if you can't be funny, just think about making it as easy as possible for people to actually learn yeah. from you, whatever that kind of looks like. Yeah. I feel I feel like a listicle blog post coming on the funniest digital marketers in the industry. <laughs> I better be number one and Pete number two. <laughs> <laughs> Not joint. No. There are cracks appearing already. <laughs> you started them. I know. So, I'm trying to get an exclusive, man. I'm trying to get an exclusive. <laughs> Whose well, team would you be on, Joanne? What? Whose team would you be on? Ooh, as in. Team JSB or Team uh, Lloyd and no, as Team in... Andrew or Team Pete? Oh, you two. <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly choose. It's your I'll interview, get... right? Mm, we should be asking you... the question. Yeah. I'll give you a free pizza if you choose Pete. And you know what I like with my pizza? Mm -hmm. Wine. Wine. You, you're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, we all know that way to a woman's heart is why mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely every time now I want to talk about something a bit more serious I give you shoes and pizza she just said she wanted to talk about something serious yeah, shoes, are, <laughs> shoes are better than mine I'm sorry actually I love shoes and I am famous for my red heels so you can go to something <laughs> oh you'll match on your book <laughs> So I want to talk about something a bit more serious now. Okay. Go on. Um, the F word. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about funnels. Funnels. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I was going through, I thought you were going to ask us about failure or something. But <laughs> no, I want to talk about funnels, funnels. because yes. when it comes to funnels and, you know, 
creating your own funnel or looking at models that other people are using mm -hmm. um, to bring the customer through in a journey and making sure that you have access to them at, at different digital touch points. Mm. I wonder, should we actually follow the models that the experts are sharing with us? Or should we have one that's kind of bespoke to our audience and how our customers are interacting with us? It's an interesting one, right? Because I think when you look at a lot of the training around funnels, they are very American. And in our opinion, it doesn't completely hit the um, British or the Irish market exactly as it might do the American market. Yeah. So we're always a little bit wary. And plus, it doesn't necessarily like align with our brand, that kind of, kind of hard sales style yeah. funnels. Yeah. Saying that, however... I think it's always stupid to ignore what's working for other people and not try to kind of take that on and implement yeah. it some way in your own business. What we do at Andrew and Pete is we try to simplify our funnels like as much as possible. So we are growing our list, we're, grow we're growing our audience. And the way we like to look at it is we've, we're growing this audience, right? And not everybody is ready to buy right now, today, right? But that's okay, right? We're building our brand over time with them. But we do need a way to find out who is actually interested in taking that next step with us. So as well as doing like our fun, um, educational, entertaining style content, we kind of lump that under this primary content we're creating. We also create what we call secondary content. Now, this secondary content is designed to sell, but it's also designed to find out who is a little bit warmer in our audience, right? And those are the people that we are following up with and putting into more of the traditional style funnels as such. So this secondary style content should indicate some like propensity to actually go buy, right? So a good example of secondary piece of content on our website is on our sales page, we have a behind the scenes look at our membership site Atomic, but to access that bit of content, you have to give us your name and your email address, yeah? So that's flagging up into our um, email service provider that this person has access to behind the scenes look at our membership site. So that says to us, they're probably a little bit warmer than everyone else in our audience that hasn't accessed that bit of content. So those people we do follow up with mm -hmm. and we do send maybe, I don't know, three to five follow up emails to see if they are ready yet to join Atomic. And if they're not, cool. They can, we can just keep on building our brand equity with them over time with the other kind of content. But if they are, then funneling them and giving them a bit more information and answering some of the questions. I hate the word funneling them, but yeah. yeah um, moves them over the line into a customer a lot quicker. Yeah. yeah. And I think like going back to the original question, every time we've tried to create our own unique style of funnels, like it's been very hit and miss. Mm. Some of them have worked, some of them just have bombed. And every time we've, you know, followed someone who's actually provided, you know, this is what's really working for me right now. If you follow that, but put it in your own unique spin on it, like your own <laughs> brand, your own wording, then it tends to work a lot better. Um, but we, we do like to do things in a non-douchey way. Um, <laughs> so like we've just, we just released a course, like a show on Atomic and it's called Email Emailed, how to like, nail your email marketing in a non-douchey way. Um, and we think that's like really important. And a lot of people have resonated and come to us because they're kind of fed up or annoyed with this really hard selling, aggressive, slimy, sleazy, you know, sales style that a lot of digital marketers do. And I think it's given the word funnels like a bad name. Yeah. Um, Especially when a lot of them are giving away copy and paste templates. Yeah. So like literally just go and copy exactly what I've done. It's just like, oh, that's not you. You wouldn't copy uh, someone else's blog post, someone else's podcast. Why are you copying someone else's email? Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not a big fan of us. So you know about, at least about two years ago, uh -huh. we had um, influencers and, and high-end digital marketers who were known for particular channels. So they were either Snapchat influencers or Instagram influencers or Facebook Instagrams influencers and you know by and large some of them are still there however i've kind of sensed a bit of a change in tone and approach and okay. um, 
because Instagram and Facebook is just emulating everything that Snapchat is doing. Um, and, you know, they're kind of stagnated and their audience isn't growing as quickly and Instagram is just rocketing through the roof. Mm. Having a one kind of strand approach to your, whether it's your influencer position or to your digital marketing, it totally is dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little bit risky. And I think we've always been wary of focusing down so much on just one platform. Saying that though, if you do want results from a social platform, then it is important you put a lot of focus on one in particular. And I think that's actually something that came away from the Upreneur conference that we were at at the weekend. I think us personally, we are maybe a little bit too spread across them where we love Twitter and we love YouTube. So going into 2018, we are going to be putting more, more focus down on, on those platforms. But I think growing your email list is super important because obviously that's your data. Don't build your audience on rented land or that malarkey. And for us, I think what we've done quite well at over the years is I think some people look to see what the next thing is all the time, right? And they're always worried about taking action because they never know if something's going to last. Where for us, it's like, we always look to see what's working now and focus on that, yeah? So when Snapchat came out, yeah, we were, we were all over Snapchat. We were absolutely loving it. We've got some great connections on Snapchat. We've got some great business from Snapchat. Mm -hmm. But if it's died, well, I'm not saying it's, it's going to die, but I think especially in our online marketing space, it is dying a little bit. Um, we're not like precious in, in saying, right, we're going to like go down with the ship. But like saying, right, Instagram's working. Let's hop over to Instagram and let's see what's going on over there. Yeah, like just utilize what's hot right now. Yeah. But all the time you want like a dominant, a dominant platform. So like Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, like they're sticking around for a while. Mm -hmm. um, like they're not going to go down tomorrow or in five years or whatever. But even if the thing is, if you have one dominant platform, even if it is on like something new, like Snapchat was, mm -hmm. The people that have made it on Snapchat, because they, they really made that their dominant platform, they grew a huge audience very quickly because it was a growing platform. And then they were able to move that audience over to something like YouTube. Yeah. So, uh, for example, Sean McBride, um, he, Sean Duras, he was like the world's most popular Snapchat. He had millions and millions of followers. And now he's got millions and millions of YouTube followers. Right, you wouldn't have been able to do that otherwise. Mm -hmm. So having one focus is always going to win out over the in more spread out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you, you might want a secondary platform mm -hmm. just to kind of cross promote your main platform and find new people and just utilizing what's hot. So yeah, yeah. So you had a little prop at the beginning of this interview, and obviously for the podcast listeners, they they will not be able to see your book. Um, but for those that will be watching on YouTube, uh, please hold up that uh, lovely little uh, book that you guys have <laughs> joined. Oh, wow. yeah. Content Mavericks, a uh, seven-step content marketing handbook. Ooh, and did you know, guys, that the magic number in listicles is seven? Oh. <laughs> it's the magic number. It's the lucky number. My favorite number. Everything comes in sevens. What were we doing? <laughs> Did we plan out a new video? Peter made like eight points. And I was like, we need to get rid of this last point. We're getting point. rid of this last point. <laughs> <laughs> Seven's the magic number. So tell us about the book. What motivated you to write it? And um, what were, were your business goals? And did you write like an equal word count each? Or does somebody write more words than the other? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm going to answer that first. Go for it. Do you think, do you, how many words do you think you wrote? I wrote About most, four, I wrote five? most of them. I think you wrote, he wrote the blurb. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was pretty even to be fair on that. Which is, now, now we've got a book each. So we've got two books. Now we've got a book each. Woo! So now we're officially an author each. Yeah. We were on, our, an author on average, before, we're yeah. only like half an author before. <laughs> But the books really come about because people are hitting their head against the wall when it comes to content marketing, okay? So they're, they're putting content out there and they're not getting anything from it. And what a lot of people are doing is focusing on the sexier side of content marketing, digital marketing. Like What's the, the sexier the, side? 
the sexier, sexier side, yeah. yeah but what, what is the sexier side of content marketing? <laughs> it's, that, that's more. Buzz. Mm, buzz. <laughs> <laughs> that's all about um, promotion and lead generation. So a lot of people are talking about paid advertising, they're talking about social media, they're talking about uh, funnels and, and landing pages. And what a lot of people are doing is just jumping towards that first. And for us, you're probably going to fail or not get the best results if you just jump into that first, okay? So people are coming into this world, maybe they've been made redundant, they've got a, a, an amazing skill, but they don't know how to market themselves, or maybe they've been doing this for a while and they're struggling. They're overwhelmed. Like, where do you actually start when it comes to content marketing? What do I do first? So Content Mavericks is the seven logical steps that you need to take. Mm -hmm. So it's the order. So I start here and then finish here. And there's five other steps before promotion and lead generation. Mm -hmm. So you need to get yourself in the right mindset. You need to find out what your customers want. You need to find out what your brand is and how you can get that across. You need to be creating content that is unique. You need to be more organized. You need to actually be able to create content rather than, so rather than just going for what you think is easiest for you, you need mm -hmm. to go with what your audience wants. Do they want videos? Do they want podcasts? Or is a blog actually okay? Um, so it goes through all these other steps first to get you organized, consistent, producing amazing content that's going to resonate. Mm -hmm. I think I will. And then promotion of that content. And then how do we generate leads and sales from that? Yeah. I was going to say, I think our favorite chapter is chapter three or module three, which is all about how to create your content stump what we're calling it. Stop. So how do you actually create content that is unique to you? That someone can look and say, oh, that's so-and-so's piece of content. That's not just copying everyone else in your industry. So we've got a specific process for actually mapping that out, the specific things that you need to kind of think about mm. to come up with a more unique idea. Yeah. yeah. So if you are creative, it gives you like a, a guideline yeah. to kind of <laughs> like rein you in. And if, <laughs> and if you're not creative, then it gives you triggers to kind of get those brainstorming points across and get your juices flowing. That's it. So now that I know that um, Andrew and Pete are not breaking up um, now or in the future, <laughs> that's my exclusive. Um, what is the future? What, what do you want the future to be for you guys? Um, let's talk about the next two to five years. What, what's your big dream, your, your big vision? World domination. Mm. Um, such a cliche. Give me something else. Models, uh, <laughs> TV uh, presenters. Uh, for, for us, <laughs> for us, we really want to grow our community, um, uh -huh. our membership site, Atomic. Uh, it's an amazing place, and that's what we want to really grow and focus on. And the way we're doing that is we're going to be providing a lot more shows. So, um, Within Atomic, there's a lot of shows already. And in our free content, we're going to be transitioning our site. So it almost looks like, um, like a Netflix so, or, a, or an Amazon Love, Love film, Amazon Prime, whatever it's called these days. Um, yeah, Netflix. <laughs> so you can go into our site and you can access a, you know, a range of different shows. So some will be funny, some will be um, just like really in depth and some will be like how-to practical things. Um, some will be challenges with Dan and Lloyd. Um, <laughs> and also there'll be the paid for stuff, which to get access to, you'll need to join Atomic. Yes. So I think it's going to be a really cool turning point for us. And, mm -hmm. and we're, we're always looking to step things up. Like, mm -hmm. well, what we're always about. I think, I think like the, um, the standards people are expecting of online content to just go and up and up and up and up and up. So we just want to keep up with that. And I don't know if there is any TV producers out there looking for an up and coming duo, mm -hmm. then I think we'd like to give that a shot oh, yeah. at some point. Well, you know what? <laughs> we, we talk about TV and um, the social networks are actually looking to partner with content creators who mm -hmm. can create the traditional TV show, but online that gives uh -huh. that Netflix feel uh -huh. that we can choose based on interest and when and where it suits us. So mm -hmm. I think you could be onto something. Mm -hmm. I really do. Not that you need my um, kind of, you know, permission or 
Um, word. Don't you believe in us, Joanne? The, yeah. We can do anything. We're taking that one. Don't, don't knock JSB's belief, really. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely worth something. Um, but I really enjoy your content. I really enjoy how you approach oh, it. And 100% agree. I mean, you know, I love selling in the real world through having a conversation with somebody. But when it comes to online and that aggressive sales, you know, it gives me an itchy skin. I really don't like it. And I think more and more people um, are finding that as well. Um, and being true to yourselves and your own personality, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I've really loved you guys coming on JSB Talks Digital. Oh, Thank we've had so much fun. fun. Thank you for having us. Um, and, you know, when you get your own online TV show, I'd love to sit on the couch with you, not behind the screen, but I'll come on. How's that? That would be awesome. Oh, okay. We're signing um, up guest one before we've yeah. even been commissioned. Mm -hmm. so there we go. <laughs> it's a package deal now. Yeah. <laughs> so Content Mavericks is the book. Atomic is the membership site. Andrewandpeat.com is the Andrew, website. Yeah, andrewandpeat.com has the links to everything. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you'll be able to find stuff on there. And of course, <laughs> They're also on a, they have a podcast and they're also on, on iTunes, on Stitcher for Android. Um, these guys are everywhere. So go check them out if you haven't already. Um, Andrew and Pete, such a pleasure. Love meeting you in real life. You are equally fun there as you are on the internet screen. Have oh. a good day. Thank you very much, Joanne. Thanks, Joanne. Thanks for listening, guys. Cheers, everybody.